analysis of statically indeterminate frame by the force method, flexibility method or method of consistent deformation. There are three types of the support. The first one is roller support. It has one support reaction. The second one is pinned. A pinned support may have two support reactions. And the last one is fixed. It has three support reactions. If a structure is statically determinate, then all of the reactions may be calculated using equilibrium equations. An example uh, of statically determinate structure would be a simply supported beam where one end pinned and the other having a roller support or it would be overhanging beam those structures uh, would have three unknowns and the number of equilibrium equations would be three. Let's add a redundant support and give a statically indeterminate structure. Statically indeterminate structures are the structures for which all reactions and internal forces cannot be determined simply using equilibrium equations. To solve a statically indeterminate beam or frame, we will use the fourth method. This method is also called the flexibility method or the method of consistent deformations. Using the force method, we will make use of redundant forces. A redundant force is one which cannot be solved using static equilibrium equations alone. The force will be taken out and reapplied so that the considered structure is always statically determinate. Additionally, the principle of superposition is applied and deflection will be found as an intermediate step to solving for a given redundant. Let's look at the procedure which may be recommended for analysis of statically indeterminate frame. First of all, we must calculate the degree of static indeterminacy. The static indeterminacy for beams and frames is defined as number of unknown support reactions minus number of equations of equilibrium. In general, for a two-dimensional structure, there are three equations of equilibrium. And static indeterminacy refers to the number of reactions that are unsolvable using basic statics. In our problem, we have two redundant unknowns. Our frame is twice statically indeterminate. Next step. Choose the rational or main system. The other words, you must choose two of the reaction forces as the redundant forces. The main system is the statically determinate system. Equivalent system is the statically determinate system acted upon by applied loads and their redundant forces. Write down the canonical equations of the force method. There are two unknowns, x1 and x2. 
x1 is the horizontal force of the support reaction in the point B. x2 is the vertical support reaction in point C. Split the equivalent system into first a statically determined system acted upon by applied loads. Second, a statically determined system acted on by the redundant force X1. And third, the statically determined system acted on by the redundant force X2. Let's draw a load bending moment diagram and two unit bending moment diagrams. Next step. Calculate coefficients and three terms of canonical equations. The free term is displacement which is the displacement for the applied loading and redundant removed. The coefficient of canonical equation is the displacement, which is the displacement for the unit load only at the point of redundancy. We will find these displacements by the Morse method using the Verishagin rule. If one is interested in finding a vertical deflection at a point in a structure, then a unit vertical force is applied as it corresponds to vertical deflection. If one is interested in finding horizontal deflection at a point, then a unit horizontal force is applied at that point as it corresponds to horizontal deflection. Similar rotational displacement at a point in a structure is found by applying a unit moment as it corresponds to rotation. To find a deflection, horizontal, vertical, angle of rotation, we must divide the load bending moment diagram to a simple geometric figures and obtain the area of each part and the centroid of each part. Next, we must multiply the area of each part on the load bending moment diagram by the ordinate on the unit bending moment diagram under the centroid of each part on the load bending moment diagram. So the system of the canonical equations and obtain x1 and x2. Next, draw two corrected bending moment diagrams of the redundant support. Next, summarize these bending moment diagrams with the load bending moment diagram. Draw diagrams of internal forces Q and 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 check yourself. Thank you for your attention. Happy practicing!